Hi, this is Mr. B. I want to go over our test right here. This is a test for the accelerated 6-7 class and I just want to quickly go over the answers and describe a few things about how to do this in case you had any questions. So for number one, we're, number one through like two, three, four, five, just talking about exponents. Uh, I think number six is the same way. Is he done here? Yeah. Number six. So all those are using exponents and our understanding of exponents. So seven to the fifth power means, <clears throat> of course, we know that our exponent five means that we have five sevens and they're all multiplied together. So that's what we see in letter D right here. We see all multiplication using parentheses for the symbol of five sevens. And we're going to do the same thing for, for number two. We want to show that negative four is, there are four of them. So I'm going to put negative four in parentheses, and then the exponent four will tell me that I have four negative fours. Uh, the negative four has to be in parentheses, because uh, it does mean something different if it is uh, not in parentheses, where the, in this case, the exponent four only belongs to the number four. That's a positive four, and the negative sign being outside of that. Here uh, in the next one, we have three-fifths, and the entire fraction is there's six of them, so I want the entire fraction to be in parentheses, and then there are six of these numbers, so six is our exponent right here. Number three, we are multiplying by a power of 10 right here, so 2.4, here's how I would do it right here. Whoa, need my marker here. Every time we multiply by 10, we've noted in the past that we can just move our decimal, shift it over to the next place value like that. So every time I multiply it by 10, I'm going to shift my decimal, and the question is, how many tens am I multiplying by? Well, it tells me right here, I'm multiplying by five tens, which would be uh, 10,000. Nope, 100,000, sorry. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five. That is five tens, I'm gonna fill those in. And here we have it right here. 240,000 is my answer. And uh, that's it right there. Let's take a look at number four right here. Number four, we see that the entire fraction of negative one-fourth is brought to the third power. So I'm looking at uh, negative one-fourth times negative one-fourth times negative one-fourth. I'm going to first just look at the number. So let's only multiply one-fourth, one-fourth, one-fourth. Let's find out what the number is, and then we'll think about the sign. So one times one times one equals one. That's right. And here, four times four, I'm going to have to kind of break it down a little bit. Uh, that's 16 right there, and 16 times four is 64. So I know my number part right here is going to be one sixty-fourth, and then I have to think I have three negative numbers. A negative number, I'm going to keep track of the signs down here. A negative number times a negative number is going to result in a positive number. And so this positive number times another negative number is going to result in a negative number. So I'm keeping track of my rules for multiplication as I multiply across. Uh, two, just as a summary right here, two negatives multiplied together, that's going to equal a positive number as the, as the product, and then a positive number times a negative number, I'll write over here positive, times a negative is going to equal a negative product here just like that so my answer is going to be negative right here uh, number five was just kind of a question regarding the exponent zero that's the answer right here if six is the base in other words if six is the base number and i know i'm trying to think of what is that exponent going to be so that the answer equals one i know that the exponent is a zero right here anything to the zero power equals one number six we're looking at prime factorization so i'm going to write um, write this in exponential form. That's what it's asking us. Write the prime factorization using exponents. So I'm going to, instead of writing repeated multiplication, write this in exponential form. So two, since I have four of them being multiplied, that's four, two to the fourth power times five right here. So that's going to be my final answer, my rewriting right there. Let's take a look at our expressions right here. Uh, first of all, First thing I want to note on expressions is uh, I want to emphasize we want to do a single pro problem, write the answer underneath following the order of operations, and then copy the entire expression out at each step. First of all, our order of operations, we have grouping symbols, so we won't always are working inside the grouping symbols. We want to go ahead and take care of all of our exponents right away. Uh, in this case, we don't have any. And then 
let's take care of all of our multiplying and dividing. And then, of course, then from left to right, of course, we do that. And then from left to right, we take care of all of our addition and subtraction. We have a lot of grouping symbols in this one, so let's uh, take care of this. First of all, the innermost grouping symbol. First of all, let, let's just summarize our grouping symbols. I see there are braces here. So that means I cannot add 15 to anything until I find one number for that whole thing right there. Then I would add 15. That's going to be my last step. I see brackets here. That means I cannot do anything in those braces. I can't do 24 minus anything. I can't do add 13, uh, add 3, until I find one number that belongs in here. What's that one number? That's my goal right there. And I also see these parentheses right here, which means, once again, I need to find one number here before I start to divide uh, that number uh, by 35 or divided from 35. All right, let's take a look here and let's take this one step at a time. Um, negative two plus negative three. So be very mindful and review your integer operations. I know if I'm adding those two, my answer is going to be negative five. So let me just take a second to do this here. I want to, okay, that's a little bit easier. Um, now that I've got my answer right here, I want to copy everything else down. Uh, copy 15 plus, copy the braces, uh, sometimes they've been changed and it doesn't matter. You don't have to draw a brace. You can just do a parenthesis. That's fine. 24 minus, there's another grouping symbol, all right? 35 divided by, and then I have this number, 50, uh, negative 5. Now, I don't necessarily need a grouping symbol, but it is a negative number, and I don't like to have two symbols next to each other, so I'm just going to put negative 5 in parentheses, and then, see, that's where I would put brackets right here. It's okay. You don't have to put brackets. You could use parentheses, but they get confusing. And then I have plus three off to the side. Again, you don't have to like be an expert at drawing these braces or anything. You can just work those out. Now the innermost grouping symbol is right here. So we're working on that. 35 divided by negative five. I have a positive and a negative, and I know that when I have a positive and negative and I multiply and divide, my answer is negative. So 35 divided by five is negative seven. Now let's copy everything else out. Now I have this one number right here, that's taken care of, uh, but I still have grouping symbols around the plus three out here and the 24 minus over here. So I wanna keep those grouping symbols and I'm gonna copy everything down. 24, there's a minus sign in here and then negative seven plus three. That's confusing with two symbols. So I just wanna put that, uh, some parentheses around negative seven. It's not a grouping symbol, but it is putting things together there. Let's copy the 15. We don't want to forget that. Next step. So now I'm working in these grouping symbols. I have to go from left to right. I cannot do addition, so I can't do this. That, no, not, not first. I have to first do this. Left to right, do that subtraction. 24 minus 7. Now again, I have to review the order, uh, or I'm sorry, the rules for integer operations. And when I'm subtracting, I want to change that into an addition problem. So uh, we do that by changing. First, I'm going to do two changes. I'm going to make this addition, okay, and then I'm going to do the opposite of whatever negative 7 is, and the opposite of that is positive 7. So one way I'll do that is just kind of make this plus. I'm adding, and I'm going to make a change right here, change that to plus. So this is really 24 plus 7, which is positive 31. Let's copy everything down. I have plus 3. I still have grouping symbols around that. Last step, this is getting simpler and simpler. Now it's really simple here. I'm gonna add these together and copy that down. So our final answer is going to be 49 right there. So that's how we work out number seven right here. Let's go ahead and do number eight as well. This has a little more complexity to it, which is always fun. We see these braces. So I know before, um, before I add, I have to figure out what's inside these braces. And inside the braces, there's a grouping symbol here. So that means I need this number first. That's gonna be my first thing I, I work for. I do have exponents here. Uh, we can do exponents right away. I could just say, okay, I wanna figure what that is. I'm gonna put that answer uh, right in there. So off to the side, I'm thinking 2 thirds times 2 thirds. Multiply across, 2 times 2, 3 times 3. Bingo, right there, 4 ninths. So I'm going to save this answer for when I copy everything down. Here, uh, let's go ahead and get this. 5 squared is 25. Let's go ahead and put that in there. 25 plus a negative 7. Here we're adding. 
a positive and a negative number, so that means we really have to subtract those two numbers and get 18. I do have to think, is this going to be a positive or negative number? And since 25 is further from zero or it has a greater absolute value, and that's a positive number, 25 plus negative 7 is going to be positive 18. So here we have positive 18. I'm going to be multiplying. I'm copying this down right here. Multiply, and then I found 4 ninths here. And then there are brackets, braces here. Uh, grouping symbols just say I want to do that. In fact, we don't really necessarily need those grouping symbols right there, but 2 times negative 4. Just copy that down right here. And let's go ahead and do our multiplication right here, this, this problem right here. Now off to the side, I want to think, okay, 18 over 1, 4 over 9. Uh, there's a couple ways we could do this. Uh, the long way would be just to multiply straight across here. Uh, we get 72. 1 times 9 is 9. And 72 divided by 9 is 8. Positive 8. 8 over 1, you could say 8 over 1, or that equals 8 right there. So let's put our 8 down here. A faster way it would be to uh, simplify before you multiply. I see an 18 here and a 9 down here. So I'm going to divide both of these numbers by 9. 18 divided by 9 is 2. 9 divided by 9 is 1. So 2 times 4 is 8, 1 times 1 is 1. It kind of gets us right to that end right there very quickly. Here we go, um, 8 plus, uh, and then 2 times negative 4 right here is going to be negative 8. I changed colors on me right here. Anyway, 8 plus negative 8 is 0. Those two are uh, opposites, so makes it easy. All right, so that is the test right there in a nutshell. Thank you.